I'm interested in finding solutions, uh, solutions to the tough and challenging issues of our day, like how do we best manage forests for carbon sequestration, how can forests best contribute to climate change mitigation, and those are really tough questions and, and not easy to answer. My name is Bill Keaton. I'm a professor of forest ecology in the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources, and I'm a fellow in the Gund Institute. So one of the main focuses of my current research is the role that forest ecosystems globally play in regulating the Earth's climate or influencing the Earth's climate and of course in mitigating climate change, anthropogenic climate change. And what that really means specifically is the role that forests play in taking up carbon from the atmosphere and then storing that in, in living and dead biomass, what we call carbon sequestration and carbon storage. And so then these days we're really interested in the role that forests could play in helping to mitigate climate change essentially by increasing the amount of carbon that they take up from the atmosphere. Right now we're sitting in one of my main research areas at the UVM Jericho Research Forest and this is a long-term silvicultural study. We're looking at ways of manipulating the architecture of this forest, what we call forest structure, and then trying to understand how that influences really important functions that we care about, like habitat for biodiversity, carbon sequestration, hydrology, other sorts of things, commodities like timber. And, you know, there's a real debate that is playing out in our community, both regionally and globally, as to what the best approach is for those sorts of things. How should we manage forests like this for carbon, for biodiversity? And you'll find different opinions across the board wherever you go. Here in this particular study, we're testing an approach that manages for late successional forest conditions. It promotes development of old growth characteristics over time. And the hypothesis is that that would yield carbon storage benefits and biodiversity benefits and other things. That particular idea is not necessarily popular with everyone, but I think it's catching on and it's gaining traction. And uh, it's only through research like this where we're probing and exploring and asking these questions. And by the way, also collecting long-term data that really help us substantiate or test some of these hypotheses that we can really help inform and convince folks of the merits of an approach like this. Really importantly, what we're finding is that there are ways of sustainably managing and conserving forests that provide a full array of ecosystem services, both economic and ecological. So it's not one versus the other. We can package and bundle those things in different ways to provide different mixes of services. So for instance, in this study, we were in, in the spot that we're sitting, we've shown that we can provide carbon storage, certain types of habitats for wildlife, as well as a moderate level of revenue from timber harvest and even non-timber forest products. So there we have the economics and the ecology fully integrated. There are many other examples of that, different approaches that provide different mixes of economic and ecological benefits. Really the challenge of our day is figuring out how to scale that up to entire landscapes, entire regions, and trying to figure out what the best mix of approaches is at truly landscape scales. And again, that's where there's this important role for groups like the GUN that can bring together lots of different types of researchers working on those problems and high-powered models to put all that together and then develop these scenarios that help us to understand how to integrate all those different um, economic and ecological objectives. Forest ecosystems, forest landscapes are important in so many ways for humanity and for the planet. For me personally, I think at the end of the day, what I really hope for is that we'll have forests like this around in the future. I'm concerned by uh, the threats facing forests globally. I, I see three big threats on, on the horizon and actually happening right now global change, invasive species, and sprawl and habitat fragmentation. Those are the three biggies. 
And I hope that what we're doing over the long run will help mitigate some of those threats. Because again, what I really hope for is that my children, my grandchildren will have the same opportunities to enjoy forests, and not just forest stands like this, but open forest landscapes, the big country, the wilderness, the working landscapes, the same things that I've had the pleasure and opportunity to enjoy. So you know, looking forward a hundred years, I hope that we still have forested landscapes around that future generations can enjoy and, and really that's what we're working towards.